Got some water flowing at a pretty good clip here. We're gonna do the intro after we get into our first fish, which hopefully will be, uh, I don't know, pretty quick, right? Nothing at that first pool. This water is crystal clear. So I expect that these fish will be pretty spooky. I prefer not to approach closely if I can avoid it, which is why I'm going to utilize every opportunity I have for back casts. Nice little plunge pool here. Oh, got one. Oh, he came off. That fish came up and took the dry fly. Nice, nice. Not bad for this time of year. All right, guys. Well, welcome back and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. I am uh, here today. It is well, we're getting into late November at the time that I'm filming this, though you'll surely see this video much later than that. Maybe, I don't know, at the rate I make videos, maybe not even until next year. What I decided to do today was hit a small stream for wild brook trout, and I wanted to revisit one of the streams that I visited pretty briefly in spring this year. This is Secret Stream G, and I'll play a couple clips from the video of my outing that I had here in May. I spent about two hours here. It is going to be an absolutely glorious day today. The forecast call for it to go into the 70s. Extraordinary for a day in late April. Oh, got him, got him. Finally got ourselves one here today. Got him, got him. All right, this one's probably about seven inches, which is not bad for these wild rookies, guys. It's really not. Uh, got to do a couple fish and it was an interesting experience overall it was it was definitely a nice stream and so i'm back here now in uh, late autumn to see what we can do okay i don't want this to be too narration heavy in any one part there's a really nice pool here i'm going to uh, put the dry dropper through there and see if we can get a taker uh, i was really pleased to see a fish actually rise in that last pool you know, unfortunately, I'm using like a, pretty much a giant stimulator for my dry fly. I, I was doing that because I really didn't anticipate anything rising. So the fact that something rose is amazing. It's not surprising I didn't get a good hook set because uh, <laughs> this dry fly is giant. Got one. Where is he? Oh. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful brookie. Took the nymph. My very first cast into that pool. Very tiny brookie, but an absolutely gorgeous fish. All right, guys, we've already put our first brookie to the net. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Not bad. Uh, I mean, especially considering we're like five minutes into the outing. Looking pretty good that we've already gotten two strikes. Obviously, uh, there's still fish hanging around this section of the stream. Now, as far as what I'm using today, I have my eight and a half foot five weight. Definitely uh, overkill for the stream. There's no reason that I really need a fly rod this big for this stream. The issue is the last small stream I was on just a couple days ago, I managed to leave my three weight on the roof of my car. And guess what? I drove away having totally forgotten it. Lord knows where it is right now, but I'm sure I will never see it again. So I'm working on getting that replaced. And in the meantime, I'm using the, uh, the big rod. <laughs> so we're gonna do what we can. You know, I do have to say that if there's one thing that I like about using the five weight in the small stream, it's that you get a, a lot of really nice reach. I'm actually, I'm actually trying to stay toward this side of the pool because this is where the larger boulders are. Um, much less likely to find any, uh, any reds in this area of the stream. Certainly, you know, you want to do your due diligence while you're out in a small stream, even post-spawn, just to make sure you're not trampling on, uh, on any reds where there are eggs. 
not hard to do. You just gotta be aware. Got one, got one. Oh, shoot. Keep forgetting how, how large this rod is. Come on, buddy. Gosh, we don't have a lot of clearance with the sticks overhead. All right, all right. Got ourselves our second rookie of the outing. This fish took the nymph as well. I was kind of expecting most of these fish would take the nymph. I was really, really surprised that that first fish came up and took the dry. All right, guys, already into our second fish. Not too bad. So far, pretty small brookies. And, um, you know, that's fine by me. Obviously, we're not going for monsters out here anyway. Uh, the biggest brookie I might generally expect outside of the exceptional specimen uh, would maybe be, I don't know, eight inches. <laughs> so, I mean, we're not going for monster fish here. These are just little small stream native brookies on this gorgeous stream in late November. And boy, <laughs> I'm already having a blast and I've barely been on the river for 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes tops. Awesome. Let's see if there's anything else out here. It's a decent sized pool. There certainly could be more than one fish, no question about it. Got him. Got him. All right. This is a nicer fish, I think. Oh boy, this is a gorgeous brookie. Oh my God, the colors. The colors, I can already tell, guys. What an incredibly beautiful fish. Wow. Look at the coloration on that fish. Absolutely gorgeous, guys. Just fantastic. Wow. What a privilege to catch these little jewels. All right, guys, very same pool as that last fish. This one had a little bit more size to it. And wow, just exceptional colors on that fish. Beautiful colored up male. Whew, can't go wrong, just can't go wrong. But can we get one more fish out of this pool? Let's find out. Trying to go a little bit further with this cast. Hit some water that I hadn't gotten up to yet. Oh, oh. and something tapping on the top. I'll tell you what guys, you know, it doesn't matter how many hundreds upon hundreds of brookies you catch. It's still exciting every time. Got him. Got him. Ah, whoop, missed him. Shoot. All right, another little micro brookie. Yeah, this guy is real tiny. We're just gonna let him go straight away. Beautiful little brookie. Bye bye, buddy. All right, guys, we got three out of this pool. Can we get any more? Let's find out. Got another. I have to be really careful about how I try to bring these fish in because I cannot lift the rod tip with all of the, uh, the sticks and overhead brush. Another gorgeous little brookie, guys. They are loving that nymph. Fourth fish out of this pool, good lord. Got him. Oh, got off. <laughs> I'm not even gonna cut it. We're gonna see if there's one more. If there's one more, I'm just gonna leave the rest of these fish alone and move on to a different pool. Seems like they're really stacked up in here. Uh, I'm not just gonna beat up on them anymore. I've caught my fill out of this pool, so we're gonna move on after this. Got another. Good God. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's what, like five or six fish that I've hooked now in this in this one pool. I'm I'm gonna bypass this pool at this point. I, I feel like 
you know, if there's more in here, could I catch them all? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so I'm not just gonna beat up every single one I possibly can out of this pool. I'm gonna move on. Let's explore some other parts of the stream and see if we can find them in any other spots. So far, so good, guys. This is a great outing already, I'll tell you what. All right, this is a run that's up above that pool. Let's see if we can get any out of this faster stuff. Ooh. We had a drown there, but this is shallower water. It's possible that that was just a snack. Nope, we got one. Oh my gosh, this fish is like an inch. Jesus. All right, new record for smallest brookie ever. No question about it. I don't even know how this fish got that little, that little nymph in his mouth. Beautiful little guy. Let's get him right back in the water. Okay guys, we have another really nice pocket here. Um, I can't tell how deep it is. It's definitely got some depth to it, no question. Real nice. Here we go. Oops, snagged. It's stagnated a little more than I expected. And we do have an eddy um, from the water kind of uh, slowing up behind this rock. And I was trying to hit the inside seam and I missed it a little bit. So we had it kind of stagnating. But that could sometimes be even that could sometimes be a decent place to nab a fish, so... You know, you gotta... You gotta really pick these little spots apart. Especially when you start to get into the colder months. You know, sometimes you're gonna find some trout that... Just are not going to... Put in the work to move more than... An inch... To take your fly. Oh. Well, we just pulled one out of one of those pockets right beside that fat stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, so we nabbed ourselves uh, a fish out of one of those pockets exactly where I thought we would be sitting. I, I don't know how, I don't, I don't even know if I was recording when he came by, but I actually just saw another fly angler come down out of the woods that had been you know, further upstream. And I can only imagine that he actually fished right up through the same water. And he was saying he did pretty damn well. So the fact that both of us are able to be going up through the same piece of water and nabbing this many fish, <sighs> off the charts action. Just crazy, guys, just crazy. Boy, what an awesome stream. <laughs> I can't believe that I only spent a, a couple hours here uh, earlier this year. I, I'm definitely gonna have to make this a stream that I come back to once or twice a year, no question about it. Okay, guys, this is a really big pool. We're really gonna pick this apart. Oh, did I un unsnag my fly? We're gonna really pick this apart, starting at the rear of the pool, working our way up. Okay. Okay, we're moving up towards the middle of the pool now. And the water even looks nicer in the middle of the pool. Oh gosh, dry fly take, dry fly take, wow. Wow, all right, yes. Oh, can we land this guy? Nice size fish. Oh, is this a brown? No, it's a brookie. Just had super vibrant colors, good lord. What a gorgeous fish, just gorgeous. All right, guys, landed ourselves a dry fly fish <laughs> in November, not too bad. Boy, and it's just so crazy to me that somebody already fished up through this water. I mean, I'm presuming he fished up through this water. Unless he just unless he just walked past all of this and then went and hit a honey hole somewhere further in the woods. I don't know. I, I presumed he fished his way all the way up. But uh, boy, what a crazy bite to be having if I'm walking, if I'm coming up right behind somebody else. Just nuts, guys. But boy, just the bite has been red hot. <laughs> what a great brookie stream.
I had a little hesitation in the dry there. That was the very same run where I got that that dry fly take. Go well, right back to the spot. It's such a good looking spot. We could definitely get another fish or two out of there. Got him. Got him. Nice. Oh, he got off. <laughs> All right, well, a little LDR there. Yeah, I'll tell you guys, it's so crazy. You know, I mean, I don't know, it happens every year, but it always surprises me that, you know, I'll be out here fishing at like 2.30, which I think it's about 2.30 right now, and the sun's already kind of coming down uh, horizontally through the forest. Like it's getting ready for sunset. I'm just like, damn, it is only 2.30. What is going on here? I am having a blast on this stream, and I do have a little bit more time, but just a little bit. As much as I would love to be out here till sunset and walk like two or three miles in this stream, it's not feasible. <laughs> it's just not right now with the amount of time that I've got. So we're gonna try to hit maybe another 100, 200 feet, see what else we could do. Yep. <laughs> ah, nicer sized fish. He's coming right downstream to me. This one took the nymph. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh, I missed him. Crap. <laughs> All right, nice. There we go, guys. Another pretty one. Let him go. Let's see what we got. Any other takers? Got another. Jesus, this can't be a brookie. Oh my God. This cannot be a brook trout. Ah, dude, you're too small even to eat bugs. Good Lord. Usually when you, when you incidentally end up hooking extremely small fish like this, you just can't even keep them on the hook because their mouth is so tiny. They can't even really get their mouth around the fly. In this particular case, somehow this guy stayed hooked. Don't ask me how. Look at that, guys. Look at how freaking small that fish is. Just incredible. Just incredible. Well, somebody definitely beat me here, but uh, probably had antlers. <laughs> Nice run over here. Good depth. I gotta stay low because I got the sun right at my back. Oh, that was a take. Definitely a little take. It had to have been a micro fish though. Had to have been. Got him. Oh yeah, when I say micro. Good lord, micro. Oh my god, and it is a brookie. Jesus. Gorgeous pool here, guys. Gorgeous pool. This is it. This is where we're going to stop. Let's see if we can nab another fish or two. Cannot go wrong with an outing like that. Just a couple hours on my hands to come out here and target some of these wild native brookies in the latter half of November. 
I would have been happy to catch just one fish, to be perfectly honest with you. That would have made this little outing. But instead, just boom, 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 one after another. I mean, it was just nonstop action, guys. Not only did we nab a ton of fish, we even got some fish to take the dry, which is just crazy. This time of year, I mean, gotta love it, guys. You gotta love it. Secret Stream G out here in New Haven County. And I'm glad to see that these brookies are doing excellent in this neck of the woods. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed seeing some of those exquisite native brookies, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Maybe check out some of the old videos if you're not familiar with the channel. I have, a, I think, about 60 videos plus now on the channel. A lot of them are going for some of these native brookies. And, uh, well, I guess I'll see you guys next time.